So since we've got this uh, council clean up around our area, I thought I'd uh, take a, a trip around and see what I can pick up. So let's see what we can pick up. Oh, what's that? Is that a microwave? Oh, there's an old oven. Do I need an old oven? Nah. Is that a laptop? Hey, that's a laptop. Washing machine. Nah. Why can't people throw out really interesting things? Jet ski. A walker. There's a nice printer up here. Oh, yes. I need stuff I can uh, fit in a boot easily. It's one of those uh, cycling machines. Well, that was a good find. A nice, big, large format printer. I'm gonna get some really good stepper motors out of that one. Probably some uh, really good uh, DC motors too. I'm just gonna be angry. So let's see how much money we can save from all the junk I collected. I managed to pick up several notebooks. This one is a Dell Latitude D450, which actually powered up. They are a good source of connectors, heat sinks, hard disks, and displays. I could have saved it, but I was more interested in the parts I could get from it. It's fairly easy to pull notebooks apart, and there's usually lots of tutorials online that you can Google. Basically, unscrew any screw that you can see. Works for me. One of the more interesting parts you can get is the LCD screen. Once you find the model number, then a simple Google will show up plenty of controller boards that you can retrofit. In my case, I had a QD14XL07 from Quanta Display and found several controllers on eBay for around $30 a pop. Nice. Batteries are good to save. They are usually divided up into individual cells that you can separate and use to power small MCUs. The RAM isn't so useful, but could be added to another notebook I had. Then there's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module running a very common Broadcom module. The 40 gigabyte hard drive can be used on several SBCs I have, while the capacitive touchpad can set you back almost $30. And these small enclosed speakers are useful, but were a bit fiddly to get out. This small flat heatsink I'll use in some of my SBC tests, and a bunch of buttons come in handy. Ooh, another heatsink. Excellent. Not sure modems could be used much these days, but might be fun to check out. Coin cell batteries. Then there's an antenna. RJ45 connectors. DB25 and DB9 connectors. And a couple of audio jacks. As for the rest, well, I didn't feel like desoldering any of the surface mount components. But then I had another two notebooks to rip apart. The Compaq Amada E500. I managed to get another LCD screen. Electret microphone. Another hard disk, another heatsink, more batteries, touchpad, more buttons, and more DB25 and DB9 connectors. The last notebook I managed to get, one of these funky thumbsticks. Another LCD screen, touchpad, speakers, more buttons, RJ45 connectors, more buttons, which can be easily desoldered, and another USB connector, which is easy to desolder as well, and also another heatsink. This brings the current tally to just a bit over 240 US dollars. Scanners are a good source of stepper motors, sensors, switches, and passive components. I could have used these excellent lights for close-up shots in my studio, but I already have enough, so didn't keep them. But there were more buttons, yay! And I was thinking of using the scanner as a motorized camera slider. The control board had a couple of bits to scavenge. A bunch of caps. Those flat connectors are always handy. DC barrel jack, then the bipolar stepper motor saved me a bit. Rocker switch, fluoro inverters are pretty expensive, so I ended up keeping both of them on this scanner. Lenses are also good for seeing small stuff, and I might see if I can interface to this neat linear camera. Flex cables are always handy. You can actually get a few bits from an old access point, like the antenna, SMD buttons, and a heatsink with heat transfer material. DC barrel jack, and on the second access point I had, another antenna. And I could have desoldered the flash chip and other ICs, but it'll be good to get some of these connectors off. Another Wi-Fi module, 
DC barrel jack, buttons, LEDs, a bunch of crystal oscillators which can easily be desoldered and this SMA PCB mounted antenna jack is pretty expensive. RJ45 connectors just need lots of solder and a screwdriver. And an old clock radio is full of a bunch of old school passives. Power cord, speaker, 7 segment LED display, even more buttons, a couple of slide switches and a clock radio IC which are actually pretty expensive. Laser printers are usually a good source of stepper and DC motors, sensors, connectors, solenoids and also gearing if you're into robotics. There's also solenoids, switches and IR sensors. Of course more buttons and LEDs. Micro switches, 60mm fan, but there's not a heck of a lot you can get from the control board, except more connectors, which added up to around $29. Then there is the laser scanner module, which I'm thinking of using as a laser leveller. I'll just have to replace the laser with something in the visible spectrum. It comes complete with its own H-bridge driver IC. The toner cartridge is a little useless to me, but the power supply is chock full of trim pots, heat sinks, coils, caps, transistors, diodes. I reckon components alone would be around $60. There's bucket loads of sensors and micro switches of all shapes and sizes. And would you believe this stepper with hybrid controller would cost you $36? Inkjet printers are also a good source of steppers, sensors, switches and passives. This is a nice 12 and 5 volt DC power supply. More sensors, buttons and connectors, USB connector and a nice motor with inbuilt encoding wheel. Microwaves on the other hand are full of high voltage stuff, but there's a few passives you can get from them. Temperature sensors, micro switches, connectors and if you're into dangerous stuff you can't forget the magnetron which is probably the reason why this microwave has been thrown out. So probably useless. As for the control PCB, well there's a few connectors, piezo buzzer, LCD and LED backlight. So how much would all these components cost me? Around 623 US dollars. That's pretty good for two hours of scouting the neighbourhood and pulling things apart. Just goes to show you can save a lot of money if you know what you're looking for. So thanks for watching and see you next week.